Hey everyone, Alan Thrall here to talk about deload weeks and how my coach Austin Baraki programs mine. Contrary to what many people think, a deload week should not be an entire week off of training. It's definitely not an easy week and it doesn't even need to be a light week. All of the training footage in this video is from my recent deload week. You'll see me lifting some pretty heavy weights and that's because intensity doesn't drop, but volume does. So from now on, I'm gonna to refer to deload week as low stress week because I don't actually deload any weight off the bar. You see what I did there? Before we continue, a low stress week can be used by individuals who are past the novice or even early intermediate phase. Now, what does this mean? In general, a novice is someone who can recover from stress within 48 hours, obviously if the stress is appropriate. This would be someone who continues to make progress on linear progression, where you are essentially just doing the same thing but adding a little bit of weight each session. Once that stops working, you become an intermediate and progress extends to maybe weekly or even monthly. As a novice or a beginner, the reason you don't need a low stress week is because you can recover from your training in a relatively short period of time. So deloading would literally just set you back. Now, the stronger you get, the harder it is to get stronger. In Austin's words, these low stress weeks are meant for individuals who need to accumulate lots of stress over time and therefore fatigue in order to generate adaptation to a new PR level of performance. At first, you can do a little bit of work and realize the gains a couple days later. Over time, you have to endure a lot of suck just to get a tiny bit of gains. So for that reason, if you're a beginner, don't just decide to take a deload or low stress week because you're lazy. You don't need it. It's only going to hurt your progress, not help it. So what the heck is a low stress week for? Well, by dropping the volume of my current routine, it's a week to let my body rest a little. For me, Alan Thrall, right now, low stress weeks seem to fall around every six week mark. But again, that's what Austin feels is appropriate for me. I send him footage of every training session, we regularly talk about how things are feeling, and he monitors my progress. He finds that every six weeks seems to work well for me. When I asked him about low stress weeks, he said the timing of low stress weeks is a variable based on a number of factors, like what phase of training we're in relative to a meet, the level of training advancement of the lifter, as well as individual factors, like just how much a person can beat themselves up over the course of a training block. So, the typical every fourth week should be a deload week might not necessarily be true. Quoting Austin again, it is total training volume that serves as the primary driver of long-term muscular adaptation, particularly from a hypertrophy standpoint, and a bigger muscle has the potential to be a stronger muscle if it gets adequate practice and exposure to handling heavier weights. For that reason, volume is manipulated on my low stress week, not necessarily intensity. Dropping off the face of the earth and performing 40% times 5 reps, 50% times 5 reps, and 60% times 5 reps, all off of a 90% training max, is not helping you. This is not me taking a shot at 5 through 1, it's what I used to always do every fourth week. Taking this light easy week would probably lead to you getting very sore all over again when you start training next week, putting you back even further. And man, do I hate being sore. Also, this is just anecdotal opinion, but taking a long, easy week off of training makes me lazy. And getting back to training with higher intensity the week after a deload is very difficult for me mentally. So, what should a perfect low stress week look like? Well, there's no such thing because low stress is relative. If you're performing eight sets of five and drop to four sets of five, that could be considered substantially lower stress. If you're doing four sets of five reps, well, that wouldn't be a drop at all. In the past, when I'm several months away from a competition, Austin will usually have me perform three sets of five reps at increasing RPE numbers, finishing with a heavy set of five for my last set. Now that I'm closer to my competition, I worked up to a top single at a given RPE and then dropped down and did one heavy set of five at a given RPE. You'll notice I perform heavy singles for my squat, press, and deadlift, but not for my bench press. 
That's because I'm competing in a US strength lifting meet in October where I will perform a max squat, press, and deadlift. So there's more emphasis on the press than the bench press during this workup. In closing, I want to leave you guys with something that you can actually take home. Austin Baraki and Jordan Feigenbaum created a free program called The Bridge. I'll include the link to download it in the description area of this video. You can learn a lot about training, way more than I can explain in a YouTube video, and some of the things discussed in this video by reading the short ebook. There's also a free program included. And Austin and Jordan will be at Untamed Strength Gym in Sacramento, California in November for a barbell medicine seminar. Info for that event also down in the description area of this video. That's it. Thanks for watching and always remember. Train on time.